Hello, my name's Anna. I'm here with Christine. We are both Jehovah's Witnesses, however, Christine has recently been disfellowshipped. Christine, I know you well. I know that you haven't done anything unscriptural. Would you like to explain what exactly has happened that's led to you being disfellowshipped? Well, I, all I can say, Anna, is that I started asking questions. I invited the elders round to my home to see if they could give me any answers to study articles in the Watchtower that I felt were really misleading and putting the blame on Jesus for giving us wrong food. That was initially what started it. Thank you, Christine. So there's a study article that you were not happy with in the Watchtower, Christine. Would you like to explain more about that study article? Yes, Anna. It was in the study article for April the 24th or to the 30th of April 2017. And it was entitled, Who is Leading God's People? Now, the bit that upset me most was the fact that the governing body mentioned they're not infallible and therefore it can err in doctrinal matters or in organisational direction. In fact, it goes on to say that there are there is an index heading Beliefs Clarified, which lists adjustments in our scriptural understanding since 1870. Then they go on to say, Of course, Jesus did not tell us that his faithful slave would produce perfect spiritual food. So, <laughs> so that to me was passing the buck. Mm -hmm. They were blaming Jesus. And I have seen Gerard Loesch in one of the broadcasts categorically stating that the food comes down from Jehovah through Jesus to the faithful slave. And if that's the case, then it would not be imperfect and they would not be getting it wrong. So to me, that was passing the buck and it was actually absolutely the most dreadful thing I'd heard. So it would be like Moses getting the law from Jehovah and then Jehovah coming back to Moses and saying, oh, Moses, you know that bit of the law I got it wrong, could you change it please and tell them something else? Or in the case of the governing body, it's they're saying, well, we've written these articles, we got the information directly from Jesus, so any mistakes in literature that we've written, those mistakes are not our fault, they're the fault of Jesus Christ, and Jesus got the information from his father, so ultimately, it's all his father's fault. But we would expect God to get things right first time and anybody being used as a prophet or um, Jesus as the word of God, he would get things right first time, wouldn't he? Absolutely. So is that the only reason you've been disfellowshipped, Christine, or is there more to this? Well, there seems to be a lot more to it, um, Anna, but some I can't explain to you because I have not, believe it or not, had um, an actual reason given to me. I haven't been to a judicial meeting. I didn't even hear or have any knowledge of the announcement made. This is the most unusual situation and people will find it very difficult to believe that I had no knowledge of the actual disfellowshipping. How did you find out about it then? I found out about it through a third party that somebody knew my grandson, a friend of his from the congregation that I have been in and he texted my grandson to say he was very sorry to hear about his nan and my poor grandson didn't have a clue what he was talking about and he said well your nan's been disfellowshipped. So it was quite a few days after the event that I actually heard myself. That's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's, it's unheard of, totally. 
So this is a really unusual situation, isn't it, Christine? Uh, how did it build up? Okay. Well, after the my query with the elders, now this is going back about 18, no, possibly two years ago. Um, yes, it would have been two years ago in 2017. I asked questions about that article. Then I kept going to meetings for a while, but I kept seeing things in the watchtower that came out and hit me that scriptures were totally twisted and I was very unsettled. And then I found out some via YouTube about the Australian Royal Commission about the child abuse is issues which really rocked me and I couldn't understand how the organisation could have dealt with this situation as they have done and I again asked the elders to come and explain these things to me and try and help me understand the policies behind this, um, this issue. Um, they were no help at all and one of them actually said to me once I'd looked on the internet, oh well, it probably fake fake news, <laughs> which obviously it was not because it was coming directly from the court hearings in, in Australia, where one of the governing body members mm -hmm. even said that um, when asked, are they God's spokespeople at this time? And he said, that would be presumptuous of him to say so. Well, I thought, well, this is just horrendous. And apart from the issues of the child abuse scandal not being treated properly, the policies were abominable. That For him to say that, well, that was just the end of it, really. I just could not go to the meetings. I lost all trust in these men who claim to be the faithful and discreet slave of Jesus. So the start of it was the literature. You were reading yes. things in the literature which you knew were a twisting of scriptures. That was your own powers of reason there. You were thinking about what you were reading. Then, via the internet, you came across that which was happening on, in Australia, the court where the member of the governing body was speaking. You saw what he said and you'd approach the elders basically for assistance in these matters to see if they could provide you <coughs> with answers and help you to get to the bottom of what was happening where these problems were coming from but they were of no help to you so that's another bit of why you're in this position now of having been disfellowshipped isn't it that's that is the case um apparently i i asked for help got none and in one one brother said it possibly fake news. Another one said, well, what do you expect us to do about it? And I was so shocked and horrified by their reactions and the things I was learning that it just, I just lost faith in, in the men that leading the organisation. And I would like to just point out, Anna, that I, I'm not new to uh, being one of Jehovah's Witnesses. How long have you been one of Jehovah's Witnesses, Christine? Since 1960, which is the majority of my life, I was 21 when I got baptised and I'm now 80 next month in April 2019. And do you still have a faith in Jehovah and Christ Jesus? Yes, I do indeed. Yeah. So you haven't lost your faith, you haven't turned apostate. No. You went to the elders seeking spiritual assistance mm. and this is the spiritual assistance you've received. You've been disfellowshipped. <laughs> So actually, Christine, it's all laughable, isn't it? Oh, it really is. It's unbelievable. I've, I have been not exactly accused of anything, but two elders came round to see me um, in December last, in the end of 2018, and said we'd, they'd like me to go to a judicial meeting it was on a Wednesday and they invited me, in inverted commas, to go to this judicial meeting on Saturday, 
which was only three days later and I had it came completely like a bolt out of the blue because I hadn't been to a meeting for over a year mm -hmm. and had very very little contact with any but two personal friends really throughout that two years at that year they came and invited me to go to this meeting and I was in utter shock and asked them why on earth I would, they would want me to go to a judicial meeting. And the brother that asked me the question just opened his Bible and said, we have been asked, and he read a portion of the scripture from Romans 16 verse 17, which said, to keep an eye on those causing divisions. No, else, no other explanation was given, just those few words. And when I said, well, uh, you know, why are you saying that to me? He, he said, we've had a few problems in the congregation lately. And I said, well, you know, completely dumbfounded. Well, what has that got to do with me? I haven't even been there for over a year. He said, well, some people have, have been disturbed and unsettled. And again, I asked what that had to do with me. Well, I didn't get an answer to that, but just said, would I go to this meeting on Saturday? And I said, no, I could not go to a meeting. I didn't see the reason why. I had my granddaughter over from Dubai and literally she was coming to visit me on that day. But also I said, well, if you feel that I have done anything to unsettle anybody, I could, could read you the letter, but for the moment off the top of my head, I said, I'm very willing to meet with these ones and apologise. If I have upset anybody, I cannot think who I've upset because I haven't discussed anything of my feelings except with personal friends and only when they've asked me. So they were trying to get you on causing divisions? Yes, it appeared that way. Mm -hmm. But no actual explanation or accusations were actually given. And later, no evidence even? Absolutely no evidence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no evidence. Mm -hmm. So you initially tried to resolve this situation by listening to what the elders said about the complaints that they were bringing against you. You were led to believe that certain ones had been upset by what you'd said. Therefore, you were ready and willing to apologise and put matters right in a scriptural way, if you could. What happened then? Well, I wrote a letter to them, actually, after considering through the night. I've been absolutely no sleep after this happening. And I wrote a letter in the morning and delivered it to the elder that came to see me, asking for the opportunity in writing to speak to these ones and do what Jesus taught us to do in Matthew 18. Even though it wasn't me that had anything against them, but I was very, very willing to do things in a scriptural way, put things right if it was at all possible. Um, the letter was totally ignored. They did not give me the opportunity. They would not even give me anybody's names that had been upset. So therefore, I, I had no opportunity to put anything right at all. So that's key, isn't it, that they gave you no names of people who they were claiming were complaining to them about you. Absolutely, that's correct. They wouldn't tell you who'd ra raised the accusations, would they? They left it all very vague, didn't they? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely vague. They would refuse. They actually, the one elder that phoned me at a later date um, totally refused to give me any names. He said it was not, <clears throat> he was not at liberty to give me any names. Hmm. You mentioned that the elders came to see you. Did anybody else come and visit you? Well, yes. Sometime uh, last year, the 
Circuit Overseer came uninvited yet again. The elders came uninvited. He also came uninvited and didn't say a, a word of greeting, just, you know why we're here. Mm hmm. Which I had to assume I knew why he was there because he didn't actually state why he was there. And you hadn't been to meetings for a little no, while. No, I hadn't been to yeah. meetings for quite some time. So he came with one of the, another elder and just opened by, asked me to read a scripture. So the circuit overseer arrived, came into your home uninvited, sat down and opened the Bible and got you to read a scripture, did you say? Yes, that is right. He asked me to read Proverbs 14, verse 15, which says, Anyone inexperienced puts faith in every word, but the shrewd one considers his steps. Well, I thought that was an extremely good scripture, mm -hmm. which I said to him, that's a brilliant scripture because... Initially, I don't feel I am inexperienced and I am examining every word. And I am considering my steps. Um, so I put, the, I twisted it round back to him because he wanted to infer that I was inexperienced and I was believing everything I was seeing or hearing. And you'd been a witness for 59, 59 years? 59 years this year. And he was inferring you were inexperienced and you were pointing out to him that you definitely were not inexperienced. And exactly that. And you definitely were testing out the words, which was why you had approached the elders in the first place, wasn't it? That, that is so, yes, indeed. Christine, you're known as a kind and caring person. I know that your reputation is such that you're known as one of the most caring and giving people in your congregation. Others have said that you're the most Christian person that they know. Because of this, ones have reached out to try to help you in your difficult situation. But things didn't go quite as planned, did they, Christine? No, sadly they did not. Um, and I was advised and actually took it upon myself to have a letter written to them, having no response from a scriptural avenue. Um, with more legalistic terms to really try and stop them from bullying me. Because they were pushing their way into your home at points, Absolutely, or virtually pushing. They overstood my threshold of my door without really being invited. Apart from that, it was the overall bullying that I felt was happening. So I did write another letter, or had another letter put together for me, in legalistic terms saying that action would be legal action would be taken if they if there was any more uninvited visitations now that also was ignored and I do believe they sent that letter to um, London Bethel and having uh, taken the action they did to uh, ignore everything I'd said to them and took it upon themselves to disfellowship me anyway without having a judicial committee. Um, I eventually found out, as I've said before, and telephoned one of the elders that I'd spoken to previously, who said to me that they didn't contact me because of this letter that I'd written saying that they would, legal action would be taken if any more contact at all was made with me but that was not true no it said uninvited uninvited visitations so was they, the term used not any contact so they could have got in touch with Absolutely. you and made an appointment to speak about this serious matter but instead they chose really to change the words in your letter they absolutely did and they had forwarded the letter to London Bethel and I did receive a reply from that which pretty much just said that if I put Jehovah's Righteous standards in my life that I would find joy and peace. So this was the initial response from London Bethel. The elders took the letter that you had sent to them which had a more legalistic tone. Mm-hmm. They presumably sent it up to London Bethel. Indeed. London Bethel then wrote to you, and what did they say again? That they just said that I 
obviously have issues or the elders have issues with me and they advised me to go to the elders to discuss this but and and then said if i put jehovah's righteous standards in my life i would find joy and peace so they disfellowshipped you <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, exactly they, exactly. You had no further contact. No, no further contact at the all. The elders didn't try to get in touch with no. you. You were just disfellowshipped without being told anything, without even having a right to appeal, without yeah. even being given the chance to put things right scripturally, if you'd done anything wrong and you hadn't done anything wrong. But they were accusing you of doing things wrong and you were ready to try and sort that out. This That's exactly what happened, Anna, and... I had said things because I was disturbed by what I'd heard and read, as you, as we discussed earlier. But I did not try and pull anybody away from the congregation or from their beliefs. I, you know, certainly did not try and deliberately try and cause divisions, which you, is what they were basically accusing me of. So you didn't try to cause any divisions? No, absolutely not. So judicial decisions can have... A strong impact on a person's life as you found out Christine and returning to the letter that you received from London Bethel it states in there that London Bethel warmly encouraged you to address the concerns that you had with your elders as these faithful brothers are again quoting from the letter the ones assigned by Jehovah to handle such matters. So you have something to say about that issue? Well, I have actually, um, Anna, because if I'm to accept they're assigned by Jehovah to handle such matters, it would have been much easier to accept had they have gone according to their own book of uh, rules, shall we say, or procedures set out in the... Shepherd in the Flock of God book, which is their own elder's handbook. But as you can see from the letter that I finally wrote to them, that hasn't happened. Yes, I've got a copy of your letter here, and you quote from the Shepherding the Flock of God book. Let me read what you've written. It says that you have clearly not even acted according to procedures set out in your own book of instructions, brackets, Shepherd the Flock book and the Organised to do Jehovah's Will book, which clearly states in chapter 1 of the Shepherd the Flock book, paragraph 3, As an elder, your ultimate objective is to imitate the supreme overseer, Jehovah, and his son in the way you treat the sheep, Ephesians 5 verse 1. Paragraph 8 states that elders cannot read the heart, they must be both just and merciful in their dealings with others and that you should hold to God's standards with everyone. Elders love for impartiality, justice and mercy will assist. Deuteronomy 16 verse 17, Micah 6 verse 8 and Matthew 5 and verse 7. Continuing in chapter 5, Determining whether a judicial committee should be formed, has the wrongdoing been established? Well, was wrongdoing established in your case, Christine? Certainly no wrongdoing, and I've put there what wrongdoing as a question because it certainly wasn't established. Yeah, OK. So carrying on in your letter, paragraph 15, causing divisions, this would be deliberate disrupting the unity of the congregation. Was that ever determined, Christine? That was not determined. No, and you wouldn't cause division in the congregation knowingly anyway, would you? Absolutely not. No. Paragraph 37. Even though a Christian has been accused of wrongdoing, a judicial committee should not be formed unless the wrongdoing has been established. Not done. Mm -hmm. Paragraph 38. If wrongdoing has not been established, but serious questions have been raised two elders to investigate the matters promptly. It would be loving for the witness to confront the accused and encourage him to approach the elders. Not done. Chapter 6. Two elders to invite, orally, 
should include following information. Make clear that the meeting is judicial. Explain what his course of action is alleged to have been. Well, the meeting of the, was made clear about the meeting, but explanation of the course of action, what I was alleged to have been, was not done. Right. So in the organised book, if this decision is to disfellowship, the committee should inform him of the decision. Not done. Clearly stating the scriptural reasons for the disfellowshipping. Not done. When informing the wrongdoer of their decision, the judicial committee should tell him that if he believes that a serious error in judgment has been made and he wishes to appeal the decision, he may do so by writing a letter clearly stating the reasons for his appeal. He will be allowed seven days for this from the time he was notified of the committee's decision. No notification, not done. So they didn't even follow their own procedures. That's correct. Let's sum this up, Christine, with some final words from that letter that you wrote to them. Okay. Well, I've, I, there's quite a bit there that I won't bother to read, but I finally said, I have most certainly not deliberately attempted to cause divisions. However, you most certainly are guilty of doing just that by your very disturbing, unchristlike behaviour. I will not be appealing your decision, as I'm sure it will not have a positive outcome. And in view of your treatment of me and blind following of the majority of the congregation, I have no desire to keep company with such. I have done no wrong and have committed no sin. I'm happy to leave myself in the hands of the loving God I know, along with his son, Christ Jesus, through whom our salvation comes. He alone has authority to judge us and he does this in righteousness. John 5, 27 to 30. This means both you and me. Thank you, Christine. Well, we'll leave it there for now. Thought-provoking words. Okay, thank you very much for that opportunity just to express what the, my feeling is on what's happened. Well, thank you for sharing this, Christine.